What's up guys? This is the Crucible Coach Works channel as you may be already aware and today I'm gonna teach you guys how I go from start to finish when wide bodying a car. Now, when you do that, it's a lot of work. So rather than doing it on a full size vehicle and doing like a multi-video series, we're gonna do it all in one video on this little guy. We've had this thing sitting around for a while now and I am excited to finally be doing something with it. It is a Porsche 911 pedal car, it's plastic. It does not take the weight of an adult, which we found out in a previous video. In fact, it is still a little broken. Now in other places like Instagram or TikTok or whatnot, we've seen people use foam to make over fenders for their car. They'll spray foam on the car, shave it off, spray it on, shave it off, and then glass over it, and then it will end up with a fiberglass product that they could then rip it on the car. Well, but if you're here, it's because you're looking for a metal wide body how-to, and you're now in the right place, because I like to do metal wide body work. So today, I'm gonna to teach you the basics that you need to know to be able to wide body your vehicle using steel or aluminum or any other material you'd like that is metal. I've seen copper done before, that's pretty sweet. Now there are multiple points to this process that are important. Step one, we have to design it and figure out what we want it to look like. Step two after that, we're gonna template it. Step three, we're gonna make it out of aluminum. Now we're working with aluminum because aluminum is softer and more ductile than steel. Thus, we can work it very quickly as opposed to steel, and especially since this is gonna be, you know, like, I don't know, a 30 second scale or whatever it is of a full size car, so all the pieces are gonna be a little bit fiddly. So if they were to steal, it just might be a little tough on the fingers, you know, on the old fingies. We're gonna be working with 3003 series aluminum today. It's about roughly 16 gauge. And we're gonna do kind of like a reverse RWB. So RWB is known for putting fiberglass or plastic onto steel cars. Well, guess what? We're gonna be putting metal onto a plastic car today. So instead of RWB standing for whatever RWB stands for, instead it's gonna be Ryan's wide body. So let's do it. Now step one is to design. Now if you're going to design a wide body for your car, you gotta take the entire car into account, right? You gotta decide if you wanna have a bold one style flare that just kind of protrudes and just looks completely out of body the rest of the car. You can want something that's kind of seamless and flows sexily throughout the whole body of the car or whatever else it is you prefer. Now, right now, this is a mock-up of what looks to be kind of like a narrow body 911 except it's a little flared here. Um, but we don't have wide body wheels or wider wheels or whatever for this car. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna find something to mock up how wide we want the car to be. We're gonna mock it up with a wheel here. We're gonna pretend that it's like if you had your car and you bought new wheels and you're trying to fit your wheels to the car. So we're gonna have mock up wheels here. And then once we have that, we'll go through the actual design process. All right, so we found this grinding wheel. It literally says grinding wheel. I don't even know what brand it is. It's the same size as the wheel. So we're gonna space it out a little bit here and we'll use that for our guide. Apparently it wants the camber too. Now we're ready to begin the design phase. We have our mock-up wheel here, and we now we have to actually figure out how these panels are gonna flow to meet the body. I like to use wire, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a wire edge of the wheel arch of how I want it to be joined to the body, and then maybe some flow lines between, maybe not, we'll see, and then we'll take some tape and run tape from the wire edge to the body itself, and then that'll become our pattern, so. Rocker's about here, about there. On this side. Look, I made a Flintstones car, Tony. This is my mock-up wheel, since we don't have a wheel, a wide wheel for it. <laughs> it's literally a Flintstones it car is. now. And there's no, there's no floor in there, and so you have to use your feet to propel it. It's yep. literally a Flintstones car. Yeah. I just can't wait till our real wheel, wide wheels and tires come in. If you're making a wide body kit for your car, you're obviously trying to make a statement, right? So we're making a statement by 
going going wide very wide that's probably the equivalent of like going like eight inches wider in the rear of the car right, yeah <laughs> if you were to scale it it's very excessive yeah i like that it's gonna fix the front edge a little more fix the dive here So now that we have these Clico clamped up, we have our wireframe edge that kind of dictates the wheel arch and what kind of flow we want, right? So if I were doing a full size car, I would now do many ribs with wireframe to get the contours. Anyway, so now that we have that together, we're gonna go ahead and go to the, the patterning process where we take our templates with, that we can then use to shape the aluminum. This is what I would also do when a full size car too, is take tape and just make a, mold, a form basically of what this is gonna look like out of tape. Uh, there's two things when you're doing metal shape, and there's shape and there's form. Form is when you take a pan and you can like fold it. So if you were to take a piece of paper and fold it in half, that would be form. Now shape is when you actually induce stretch or shrink the panel. So this panel itself, this tape pattern, is gonna be what we're gonna start with before we add any shape to the panel. Meaning that we're, before we add any stretching or shrinking. So it's gonna be a little flat. So we've got our tape pattern now. I just loosely spanned tape across from the wireframe to the body. So now I'm gonna go and cut out the edge of the wheel arch and where it meets the body in a nice crisp line, crisp-ish. Um, and then we're gonna be able to lay this down on some sheet metal and cut it out. Crispy. Now I'm going to add some details too, but you notice here in my wire form, it kind of like buckles over and then wraps around. I'm gonna add a lip, just like a 911 would have. If I were doing this full scale, I would have added that lip with wire form, but because it's smaller, I'm not gonna do that. Um, I'm gonna add it retroactively in the metal shaping process. So there's gonna be an edge here, you know, that runs up. As you can see, it's on a material here, so I got the oversized material, but you'll see. It'll, it'll come out in the wash. The hardest part about doing the pattern when you are making any panel in a car, especially body panels, is making sure you have enough material in the end. So I like to oversize everything I'm working on just marginally. Now, if you oversize it too much, you're gonna be working with too much material and it's gonna be a pain. If you don't oversize it though, and you do exactly what you think it's going to need to be, you might end up just wasting a panel having to do it all over again. So this is the fun part. It's gonna be a little scary. So I know that the inside edge is pretty much gonna be where I want it to be. I'm not gonna oversize that much. But I am, however, gonna oversize the ends and then the inside of the arch as well because I do know I wanna add a bead, which means I'm gonna need more material, and I'm gonna stretch out past that then wrap it down in. So I'm gonna start off first by marking the exact shape. That's a good reference. We'll retain this for the other side just in case, just in case we end up doing the whole car. Beautiful. There you go, perfect. There's our art. Now, when you do this, when you oversize your pattern, it's called framing your panel. And there's many other benefits, and we'll go into that as we're going through the metal shaping process. So now we have our not fitting piece, because there's no shape to it, but I could probably get it close just by bending it here. It's, you know, you get the idea. That's what we're gonna be ending up with. But now, you'll notice that every car, well, I can't, I can't say every car, most every car does not have a single straight, fully straight panel on it. They always have at least some kind of radius in them. So, personally, I'm not a fan of flares that are like this. Yeah, they're all in the car and they're like that. So, we're going to add some shape to these now. This is an English wheel. The way it works is you have an upper anvil that is static and a lower anvil that can add pressure and has different radii dies or anvils that you can put into it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add pressure here and use this radius and kind of wrap this upper edge you know, over so that it can actually match the body itself. Thank you. 
Now, I know you're thinking to yourself, but what if I don't have an English wheel? Well, there's two options. One, you can go to Harbor Freight and get one like the one you have over here. It's functional, it works, it's not that great, but it does get the job done. Or you can use other tooling, you can use a hammer and dolly to stretch it, because when you, when you take a hammer and a dolly, you smack it, it is actually stretching the material. So now that we have our inner flare edge, this transition started to be worked out. Now I'm gonna work on the actual body through here. So our end goal is to have this be a little curved, have a little bit of radius to it, have this kind of more of a hump, have this kind of scallop in the hump back out like the wire form showed, and the back's more of a sharper curve. So I'm not gonna get too much shape back here. So we're gonna probably use the wheel. We're gonna wheel through here, get this to have a nice little radius to it throughout the whole panel, and then we'll be able to soon define this edge as well. Look at that, now we're getting a flare together. So let's talk about the planishing hammer now. So this is a planishing hammer. The way it works is there's a air, little air hammer up top that reciprocates up and down. You can put different radii or lower dies on the underside for different shapes. Kind of like the English wheel, but automatic. All these methods that I'm showing you for the English wheel, the planishing hammer, even using a hammer over there and just hitting it, it's all inducing stretch. So it's literally compressing the panel and causing it to have more surface area, which is where the stretch is coming from. Now we have our rough panel. It's rough, but it's there. So the goal of this video is just to show you the process from start to finish in a scaled down version of how I would make a wide body flare, right? In later videos, and you guys shout out in the comments below what tooling you wanna see or what, what methods you wanna see, but in later videos, we're gonna go into further detail on how to use the tooling that I used in this video in further detail. <laughs> <laughs> now there's a couple ways I could approach this. If this was a full size vehicle, I would have the wire form on the car and be putting the sheet metal on the outside. And then I can just reach up behind the panel and describe on the back side where the grill arch is. Since this isn't, instead I'm going to tape line it. Yep, that's what I want. This is what's called a Coleco. Basically they're reusable rivets. And what, they, what happens is you make a eighth inch hole or quarter inch hole, whatever size Coleco you have, these are eighth inch. And you use this tool, right? So it, what it happens is it clamps it and it allows these two fingers to come together, which is the size of the eighth inch hole. Then when you release it, they expand again and it will grip the panel that's behind the panel you're making and pinch it together like a rivet would. So they're basically reusable rivets for mock-up. And then now, every time, once I put all these in here, every single time that I take this panel off, I can put it back on in an extremely precise, repeatable fashion because it'll always go back to the same point it was. There we go. Now let's take this over to the bead roller. A bead roller can be used to lay beads, right? But you can also use it to tip flanges. Typically what I do is I take my sharpest radius die on the bottom and a big flat die on the top Get just enough pressure to make a little bit of stretch, but not enough to like really do much damage. And then I'm gonna roll in slowly and just kind of push it this way to tip it over. When I do that, you're gonna notice. Bam. Oh no, I ruined the panel. Whatever will I do? It's intentional. It's, this is a learning experience right here. If you were to do what I just did there, which is tip a flange over on itself, on an inner radius like this, like this arch, what happens is you have too much material there now. It wants to be shrunk and it displayed the panel out. Don't worry, there's an easy fix. The way this works is pretty simple actually. 
There's two jaws. When you compress, this is a kick shrinker. I, I prefer the kick because then you don't have to use your hands to use the arm. Um, when you kick this, these jaws come together. And when they come together, as you can see this act in the action here, they force the material together then. Thus shrinking the surface area of the panel. So what I need to do now is go through very, very lightly, shrink. Now again, I oversized this inner arch. It's way oversized, but don't worry. We're gonna trim it back later. So this is the preliminary shrinking here, and as you can see, it does not fit right. So now I need to go do is go through and read the panel and see what needs to be shrunk more to bring this in. Now I think this arch here is pretty good. I think like through here needs shrunk to bring this whole thing down, because this, this profile here looks right. And then back here, this whole thing just looks a little soft, especially through here. So I'm gonna shrink through here, I'm gonna shrink here, and leave this alone probably. Yeah, I feel like it's yeah. just a little low. Oil pressure looks good. We got about Yeah, it's warm. It's definitely warm. Hands. Just saying, there's two oil temp cages. <laughs> oh, man. man. They were so close. Man, the inversion <laughs> has been shattered now. I can't, I can't work on this anymore. <laughs> so we have our full shaped fender now, right? Well, the quarter panel, flare, whatever you want to call it. There are many differences that you would want to do if you were actually making this for a full size car. Now, again, we're doing this down to scale because it's more fun, it's quicker. There's a couple things that you'd have to keep in mind. Number one, I have this broken over to a sharp edge here, right? Typically what you'd want to do then is have a second brake pass here on the lip so it would wrap back around again, you can even hem it a full 180 degrees. That would add some strength and rigidity to the edge of this lip. Uh, typically that's something I would do on one of our builds. Or like the slant nose, for example, I made an inner tub and they made it together right there. They were spot welded together. It made it a lot stronger, less body roll and no creaking when you drive around, which is important as well. Another thing to keep in mind too is like back here, for example, this is based off of a 911, right? So on a 911 you have a hard, like rear bumper, right? Bumper extension here. And there's a, there's a cut line between these two because the bumper's removable. So you'd actually want to go through and do a cut line across here and you'd want to make a seam that they could then bolt up to each other and be separate pieces because otherwise it's not functional, yada, yada, yada. And then lastly, another important thing you'd want to do is not leave the original corner panel underneath, right? So this is again a 911. The 911s don't have an inner wheel well, it's just a skin on the outside for the quarter panel. So what I would then do is actually go through and scribe, you know, use a marker or whatever, scribe a cut line with the panel fitted up, remove the panel, cut along that line, put this back up and then weld it with a nice butt weld, which butt weld is when you have two panels mated end to end and not lapped over each other. So butt weld is like end to end end to end and then seamlessly weld it and do the metal finishing so that it's seamless and finished and there's nothing if you look underneath that looks mangled or could rust. Those are important things that you would wanna do if you were going to be doing this on a full size vehicle and they're what I do and we do here when we make our full size builds. So that about wraps up the flare fabrication. This is Metal Shaping 101. So now go ahead and take this application and apply it to your vehicle if that's what you're looking to do. Comment down below if you guys wanna see or if you have any feedback on this in particular, or if you just wanna say hi, I'll say hi back. So thanks for watching guys and we'll see you next week.